the journey itself is very much inspired by my my own emotional journey in both my coming of age and in my recognizing and realizing that I am an Indigenous person and what does it mean in the world. Hello, um, I'm Sebastian Markt, the Head of Programming at Berlin Knowledge Generation and um, it is my honor to have the opportunity today to talk to Tracy Deer, the Director of Beans, which is competing at the Generation K Plus competition as part of this year's official selection for Berlinale. Hello and welcome Tracy to this virtual part um, of this year's festival. Um, thank you for taking the time. Um, as, a, as a way of introduction, um, how would you describe your film to people who have not yet had the chance to see it? In a nutshell, it's a coming of age story of a 12 year old Mohawk girl during an indigenous uprising that did happen in Canada. Historically, this did happen in 1990. And it's semi-autobiographical as I was a 12-year-old Mohawk girl who lived through that. And it's, and it's a journey of loss of innocence. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey of a young girl figuring out her Indigenous identity in a world that is quite hostile towards her and her people and finding her voice and her resilience through that experience. And this is your first feature film, but you've actually done a lot of work um, in film and, and also in television, particularly as a documentary um, filmmaker. Um, and um, you've, you've said before that in a way this is the fruit of a 30 year process um, for you. Do, do you want to say a bit more about um, how you arrived um, at, at this film um, over the, this time? As I mentioned, I was 12 years old when I lived through this event myself. I was also 12 years old when I decided I wanted to become a filmmaker. And so even at that young age, the dream project was one day to tell this story from a child's point of view. I started my career in documentary. Um, 10, I had 10 full years there uh, exploring truth and honesty and vulnerability. Um, I do think that that experience really did play into the creation of this story and helping me me and my co-writer Meredith Lishnick write the film, but also in the film making process and working with the actors. Um, my time in television, uh, I had another 10 years in television before making this film. And uh, that was that was the training ground for fiction and gaining my confidence as a director and working with actors and of course the team and you know draft after draft we went through um, once I would review it I knew that we it, this was not it yet and so in the spring of 2019 to have finally had that draft and said okay this is this is it let's let's go let's make this You're on kitchen sink duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one's a little heavier. Okay? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. We're hard workers. <laughs> yes, we are, sweetie. Okay, find a little spot and stuff it in there, okay? Okay. Your, your film clearly has a star in a double sense. It's it's the story of Beans, who's, I think, practically in every scene um, of the film. You have a wonderful actress who who plays that role, who um, is, of, of course, now from a different um, generation. Um, can you say a, a bit about how you worked with her and how she relates to the story, which in, in some sense um, is not her story, but at the same time is um, is dealing with issues that unfortunately are still also part of her world. Yes, not only are the issues still present, unfortunately, but she is Mohawk from a neighboring Mohawk community. And so this is very much a part of her history. And as indigenous people, we, we carry our history with us and we carry both the, the good and the beautiful, But there's also a lot of trauma. There's a lot of hardship that we also carry. And as a young woman, she was very aware of what happened to her people 30 years ago. So Gewendio brought, 
just an incredible sensitivity to the project um, and awareness and, and really this, the, inter, the integral knowledge of what it is to be Mohawk. So in the same way that her character in the film is, is figuring that out, it was really incredible the amount of understanding she had for this character. There wasn't a lot of, I, I didn't need to explain to any of these young characters in great detail what happened. They are all aware of the Oka crisis and they all came with just ex incredible pride to be a part of, of, of telling the story, not only to Canadians, but to the world. It was really incredible to work with these young people and have them bring, you know, the authenticity of being young into the film. Um, just as a bit of background for especially European audiences who might not be as familiar with that particular history, can you say a bit more about what the Oka crisis was and what its significance um, in, in Canadian history is? Because it's, it's not only an episode um, of racist violence, but also an episode of resistance. So uh, the Oka crisis, um, came into being uh, just over 30 years ago when um, an indigenous community, a Mohawk community, not mine, but a neighboring community, um, stood up to a land development by the neighboring white community to expand a golf course onto land that was the Mohawk people's territory. So they, they peacefully occupied that forest for four months to prevent it from being bulldozed. And Eventually that white community called in the provincial police who came in armed um, and a shootout ensued. And that is what began the Oka crisis. Beans, Beans, it's your turn. Fuck you, motherfucker! You're the dead man one! You fucking white asshole, Beans! itself is very much inspired by my my own emotional journey in both my coming of age and in my recognizing and realizing that I am an Indigenous person and what does it mean in the world. The Oka crisis is, is so big. There's so many moving parts to it that for the longest time it was really overshadowing and 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 she was she wasn't as she wasn't as central because we were so concerned with making sure everybody understands every single thing that happened until we, until it dawned on us and it took a while, which is surprising until it dawned on us that as a 12 year old, I was not aware of every single thing happening at every single moment. And so how, how about we take the, the audience on the same journey that she had? It's okay that you don't understand every single piece she doesn't understand every single piece. And so how does that inform her? And then therefore, how does that inform the audience? So once we once we hit upon that, it then became much easier to just draw that line. And it then became about her in every single scene. How is she discovering this? How is she, how is she being informed by this? <laughs> My favorite, can I have them, please? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Are you going to ring me up or? Hello? You're going to have to leave. We are leaving. Right after we pay for our groceries. Your kind are not welcome here. Excuse me? What the fuck did you just say? Wait a minute. Hey, Adam, these are my friends and my kids. We need this food. We have money. I'm sorry, Lily. 
You have to leave. You can't have it, Rue. No! Mommy said yes! Uh, please? Quit staring, assholes! Because! Wait, they call it say it's This is illegal. You can't deny a service based on our race. This is fucking bullshit. Okay, Celine, I'll call the police. No, we'll go. We don't want any trouble. You hateful, small-minded coward. Howie, come on. Let's just go. Shut the fuck up, frog. Fuck you. You're not going to get away with this. The story is a story that, um, in some way, turns around a certain idea of sovereignty, which is an important concept um, in, in indigenous um, politics. Um, but it's also, um, there is something like um, a, a narrative sovereignty um, that, that is also the, the movement that the, that the film makes, um, also in, without giving away too much of, of the journey um, of its character, but um, she arrives at a different place um, than from where she started, um, and she she arrives at a different place of asserting herself um, and um, and telling her own story. Um, but I, here, I also just be interested in in your ideas about um, about this. So my my whole life has been about wanting to be seen wanting to be heard, wanting to be understood. Because after living through the Oka crisis and after living through that level of violence and racism, I felt very invisible, very worthless, very hopeless as an indigenous teenager. And so every fiber in my being as a storyteller has been about wanting to give us a voice and a big part of my community's movement right now in relation to narr narrative sovereignty is, is focusing on the value that we have to bring through our stories. That the, the layers that we have to bring, the understanding that we inherently bring because we are Indigenous people is so much more than somebody who is just fascinated by us. Somebody who, you know, heard of something and was like, oh, that's, isn't that interesting? Let me tell a story about that. Um, we really want people to step back from that fascination and say, your fascination is not enough. That is not enough motivation to tell our story. And I hope with film after film that is coming out, um, more and more of our our white colleagues, and I, I would like to say our, our allies out there will realize that it's now time for them to step back and just give us give us the floor. It's time for it's time for us to tell our own stories. As a um, last question, do you want to say something about what you what you see in your future as an artist and as a, as a filmmaker, where you want to go? Well, it's been 20 years telling Indigenous stories. I really hope that that continues. Um, I feel so blessed that I've been able to do that for 20 years. I loved making my first feature. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, all of that remains open features, TV documentaries. I love all genres and, you know, there's so many stories out there and each story, each story decides, um, where it best should live. So I hope I have another um, a fruitful 20 years ahead of me. Thank you very much um, for sharing your thoughts um, and your time. And um, yeah, we hope that um, the day where, where audience, audiences can engage um, with the film um, comes very soon. Me too. Thank you so much. <laughs>